my previous lecture on recent advances in diabetes. So today we'll talk about part two of diabetes, recent advances. Let's see what all new things have come up in the diagnosis of diabetes. Till now, we were diagnosing diabetes if fasting blood sugar is more than 126 milligram diabetes and if this test is of course this test is done on two different occasions and if it is more than 126 is diabetes that we know or random blood sugar more than or equal to 200 milligram is diabetes this we have been doing now what the new thing have come up now even HbA1c more than 6.5 percent is diabetes this is a new thing Well, till now, what we know that SbA1c tell you sugar value for last three months, that is still there. But now it is more than 6.5% is now a new diagnostic criteria of diabetes. Okay. Now let's see what else new thing has come up. The new thing is estimated average glucose. Estimated average glucose what in short we write as EAG this is also based on HbA1c this is a second carry home message for you estimated average glucose is based on HbA1c so let's learn what he's talking about if you are writing stop writing now listen to me suppose I'm sitting in my OPD a, a diabetic for my one of my diabetic patient who has been diabetic for last 10 years he come to me and I know he's a very disciplined patient he takes diet on time he takes medication on time and his sugar remains by and large normal this much I know 10 year patient of mine one day he come to me in the morning he comes he says doctor today I got my fasting blood sugar it is four it's 500 500 milligram I get surprised such a high sugar I'm really surprised and I know he's a very disciplined man he takes all things in time and very high now I'm just thinking as a clinician I'm thinking what to do should I increase his dose or diabetic drug or not then he says, oh doctor 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 I forgot to tell you one thing what did you forget I told you that I got my HbA1c also and that is 5.5 absolutely normal this is normal but his fasting sugar is very very high now as a treating physician it creates more problem for me because this tell you sugar value for last three months his last three months sugar has been normal but today fasting sugar is high again it has created more problem as a treating physician now what to do then he said oh doctor 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 sorry 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 I forgot to tell you one more thing what did you forget oh doctor last night I went to a party and I forgot to take my anti diabetic drug and I had a very lavish dinner I his today fasting sugar is high because that was due to transient disturbance in the last night only where he did not take his anti diabetic drug and he had a overeating and that's why his fasting sugar is very very high so now I now I have come to know that I don't have to worry about this 500 to so seeing this problem they have come up with the idea of estimated average glucose that means 
like this gentleman he's fast so what they say they have given certain values which are given in the all the textbook suppose somebody has a hba1c of 6 his average sugar must be around 126 if it is 5.5 his average sugar must be somewhere around 110 6.5 then it should be around 140 7 it is 154 7.5 169 and so on so on but what the new thing has come up that again till now as a treating physician we were treating the patient on the base of fasting pp or enough sugar only now we have to include hba1c for the planning or treatment also like the case what i discussed just now if i had not done hba1c then definitely as a treating physician anybody can add more uh, dose of anti-diabetic drug which will lead to hypoglycemia so now the new thing is estimated average glucose is also used in treatment planning we just do not go blindly by fasting or pp sugar so this is the second recent advances for you now one more thing third new thing is down and up regulation of receptors down and up regulation of receptors it is seen in type 2 diabetes it is seen in type 2 diabetes this is the third carry home message type 2 diabetes okay so let's learn what he is talking about well all of you know that in type 2 diabetes obesity is the feature and there is insulin resistance is there okay but in the initial phase of type 2 diabetes the serum insulin level is very very high that means in the initial phase of type 2 diabetes it is a state of hyperinsulinemia but still the patient has is hyperglycemic is something very something very interesting why it is so so to, to the end is due to down and up regulation receptor so all of us know that insulin act via receptor and these are tyrosine kinase receptor now as the body weight increases the number of receptor go down look at my hands this is body weight this is number of receptor as the body weight increases the number of receptor go down this is known as down regulation of receptor when the body weight goes down number of receptor go high this is known as up regulation of receptor so in type 2 diabetic patient they have obesity due to obesity they have a down regulation of receptor it means what whenever you will treating a case of type 2 diabetes your first aim should be to you tell the patient to reduce the body weight because once the patient reduces body weight number of receptor go up because of up regulation of receptor patient already has enough insulin in the body and patient become all right and you'll be happy to know that 50% of the type 2 diabetic patient as high as 50% of type 2 diabetic patient can be just controlled by diet and exercise only it's a big number so that's the importance of having the weight control as a treatment plan for the type 2 diabetes but what happened 
in a type 2 diabetic patient you advise for the dietary what problem occur yo yo dieting one more thing yo yo dieting again a new thing for you yo yo dieting yo yo dieting this is a new thing for you now what is yo yo dieting you sit with patient, he's an obese man, you convince him to reduce the body weight and most of the our patient, our patient get, they get motivated. Obese patient, they do get motivated may, with, with or without diabetes. So what happened? They are taking very high amount of calories. They will reduce. They will keep it low calorie diet for a few days. But again, after a few days, they come back to original diet. They'll keep on taking extra calorie for a few days. Again, you convince them, they will take like this. The same circle goes. They take low calorie for a few days. They get fed up with the type of diet. What a dietitian prescribed that take a boiled vegetable, don't take spicy food, don't take... Uh, too much of the uh, oily food, take fruits, etc., etc., they get bored. So they come back to original exercise, but again convince, go back to this thing. So this cycle of overeating and normal eating, keep on, or less eating goes on, it is known as yo-yo dieting. So yo-yo dieting is extra calorie, low calorie, extra calorie circle going is yo-yo dieting is there, right? Well, so now we talk about, so we know about type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but there are some other form of diabetes also. So let's talk about some other new form of diabetes. One is the potential diabetes. This is equal to positive family history. Make a box of this also. Positive family history. This is the fifth carry home point. Positive family history. Written. Stop writing. Now let's learn the subject. What is this? Suppose I am sitting in my OPD. A patient come. A 20 year old boy come. He has fever, sore throat, body pain, and I, by clinically, I think he is a case of viral fever. But I ask him, are you diabetic? He says, doctor, I am not diabetic. I got my sugar recently checked. I am not diabetic, but my mom or father or both are diabetic. Patient himself is not diabetic, but his mother or father or both are diabetic. So we will call him as a case of potential diabetes because he has a positive family history. It's quite possible any one of you who is watching this video, you are normal, your sugar is normal, it's quite possible that uh, your, either your mom or father or dad is diabetic or both are diabetic. So you will call yourself as a case of potential diabetes. I hope you have understood my point very uh, clearly. Then we have one more thing called latent diabetes latent diabetes. This is diabetes under stress. Diabetes under stressful condition, sex carrier home message is diabetes. Latent diabetes is diabetes under stress. Condition written, now stop writing. Let's learn the subject, what he's talking about. Again, I am sitting in my OPD, a patient of severe asthma come to me. So asthma come to me, he has very severe episode and I check his sugar, his sugar is normal. And I prescribe him prednisolone. Prednisolone, which is a steroid and we all know steroid can increase blood sugar. Okay, because of gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, it can increase the blood sugar. Well, he takes the medicine for 15 days. He come back to me. 
after 15 days. Before starting his penicillin, his random sugar was 100. Now, after 15 days of taking penicillin, he come back. Now his random sugar is 400. It has definitely increased tremendously. So this is due to all steroid induced. So now I gradually withdraw the steroid and it's again random sugar come back to 100. So now we can very well say that he has stress in the body due to steroid and that lead to hyperglycemia. So that's why latent diabetes is stress induced diabetes. Then we have a brittle diabetes. It is seen in type 1. Brittle diabetes is seen in type 1. Let's learn the basic fundamental. What is brittle diabetes? So in these patients, sometimes sugar goes very high, sugar goes down, high, low. So there is wide fluctuation of blood sugar. Sometimes patient, because of very high sugar, patient may develop diabetes, ketoacidosis. Sometimes it develop hypoglycemia. The wide fluctuation of blood sugar is there. That is so-called what? Brittle diabetes. Seen in type 1 patient, especially in the children, is a seen. Now we talk about Lada. Lada. Is the full form is write down latent autoimmune diabetes of adult. Latent autoimmune diabetes of adults. Now stop writing. Try to learn the subject. We know very well that type 1 diabetes, which is a type of autoimmune diabetes, occur in children or what they say below 30 or 40 years. But that concept is gone. Now even type 1 diabetes can occur in the elderly person around 70, 80 year also it can happen. So LADA is nothing but a kind of type 1 diabetes in adults. So LADA the full form is latent autoimmune diabetes of adult. It is a, nothing but a kind of type 1 diabetes. It is a kind of type 1 diabetes occurring in the elderly person. Taiwan in elderly person. This is the carry home message number eight for you. Now we talk about Modi. Modi, the full form is maturity onset diabetes of young. Maturity onset diabetes of young. In short, it's a kind of type 2 diabetes occurring in the young patient. It's a kind of okay. So young patient, suppose right now I'm sitting in my sitting in my OPD, a 20 year old boy who is adaptive for last two years come to me. So obviously I'll think about his case, think about his case of type 1 diabetes. But why I investigate, I find he's a case of type 2 diabetes. Why? Because though there's no autoantibodies, and remember in type 1, uh, type 1 diabetes, we have autoantibodies. Now what is extra about this? It is autosomal dominant. 
it is autosomal dominant. That means family history will be definitely positive. Remember, in case of type 2 diabetes, family history is positive, but here it is definitely positive. And the reason is reduce insulin secretion. The reason here is reduce insulin secretion. That's why these patients respond very well to low dose of sulfonylurea or low dose of insulin. They respond very well. And in this case, obesity is not a feature. Hypertension is usually not a feature and lipids are usually normal. Re uh, hyperlipidemia is not a feature. Okay? So, in MODY, uh, problem is low insulin. There are different types of MODY, six types, but three is the most common type. MOD Y3 is the most common and it is due to HNF1 alpha mutation. HNF1 alpha mutation is the reason of high sugar in this patient. So let's have a quick revision only in 30 seconds. But all you have to remember in today's lecture in recent ones is the first point is HbA1c more than 6.5% is the new additional diagnostic criteria of diabetes. Estimated average glucose is based on HbA1c. Down and up regulation of receptor is seen in type 2 diabetes. Yo-yo dieting is what we have the problem in dieting. Potential diabetes is positive family history. Latent diabetes is stress-induced diabetes. Brittle diabetes occur in type 1. There is wide fluctuation of blood sugar. LADA is a kind of type 1 diabetes occurring in the elderly person. MODY is a kind of type 2 diabetes occurring in the younger patient. It is autosomal dominant. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I have posted many of the lectures already done in, the, in YouTube. You can very well watch all these videos. And if you want to talk to me, you can very well send your message via Messenger. And the next lecture I will be doing, the recent one says part three. Do watch this video also. Thank you very much.